Hello, my name is Kate Dickinson, brought to you from my bed closet, and today we're going to be talking about physics. Physics is such an interesting topic, and we can see it almost everywhere around us. We can see it when things move, when there's energy, and when there's matter. And today we're going to look into that. Today we're going to be looking at the relationship between the air pressure in a ball and the rebound height of that ball after one bounce. Here's what you'll need. An air pump. A ladder a tape measure, and a ball. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the ladder and I'm gonna stand at the top of the ladder with the ball and I'll drop the ball. And using my tape measure in my video, I can go back and look at the maximum height of the ball. And I can use different pressures, like more pressure and less pressure using my air pump. And then I will record the different maximum rebound heights of each trial. I'll put this in a chart and then we'll be able to find the relationship between maximum height and pressure. But before we get out there, let's look into the forces that are acting on the ball. As I let go of the ball at the top of the ladder, the only force while it's in the air that is working on it is gravity. This is called free fall. Free fall is a downward movement under the force of gravity only. Let's look at our force diagram. So since this object is in free fall, this is the basketball and this is gravity, and gravity is the only force that is working on it in the downward direction. By knowing that the basketball is in free fall, we know the basketball's acceleration. So the free fall acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second on Earth, which means for the first second the basketball is moving at 9.8 meters per second, and the next second, it is moving 9.8 meters per second faster than it was for the first second. To start, I tried to make sure that the ball was as flat as possible. I held the measure and I dropped the ball, and the ball did not rebound very high. I then began to add air to the ball. I put the air pressure machine up to 10 psi because that's about how much pressure is in a ball. And then I recorded the rebound height for 2 psi. I continued to add 2 psi for each experiment, although sometimes I didn't stop it perfectly on each interval of 2 psi, I would make sure to add more or let some air out off of camera so that the results would be more accurate. For each of these clips, I stopped the video and looked at the maximum height in inches for the ball's rebound height. As you can see, as I add more air, the ball begins to bounce higher. I will later show you a chart that will explain the relationship between the air pressure and the rebound height of the ball. For the last few trials, I continued to add air until the ball felt firm. I ended up stopping at 15 psi until I thought the ball was completely full of air. Here are the numbers. I first put them in a chart and then graphed it. As you can see, the graph has an overall rough linear pattern. From about 0 to 4 psi, you can tell the ball is increasing about the same height for every drop. From 6 to 10 psi, this is where the ball is increasing in height the most. You can observe in this interval that the rebound height is still increasing the same amount for each trial, however it is increasing more than it was for the 0 to 4 interval and from 10 to 15 psi, the line levels off. This is because the ball is almost completely full of air, so it's reaching its maximum height. In the earlier trials, when the ball was flat, a larger surface area of the ball was hitting the ground because it was squished. This means more energy was transferred to the ground. As I inflated the ball and it became round, only a single singular point of the sphere was hitting the ground meaning there was a higher push force than before, and there was less energy being transferred to the ground, meaning that the ball went higher. I did not graph the line of best fit for this graph because I wanted you to be able to break up the intervals of PSI and be able to tell how they increase in height differently for each interval. However, this is the graph with the line of best fit, and you can tell that the points are relatively close to the line. As you can see, this experiment has an evident conclusion that as you increase air pressure in a ball, the rebound height of the ball will also increase. Thank you for learning with me today.